I just recorded about five minutes of video talking to all you good folks and didn't even have the camera on. <laughs> I was in here looking at myself and talking to myself. Kind of like hanging out with my buddies down at Dulles and Camoso and just might as well be talking to the wall. But anyway, the whole purpose of this video is I had a chance yesterday to go to Puerto Viejo and I met with my buddy Ace Maldonado. He is GM Ace. He has his own YouTube channel. He's done several videos. He's up to over 4,000 subscribers. He can give you a completely different perspective on how things are here in Ecuador. He's like 35 years old, educated. He's a teach English teacher, teaches English at one of the academies there in Puerto Viejo. We had great conversations, but he recorded a video of the process of getting your matricula. So I'm going to, I think that's something that everybody needs to watch, especially if you're going to come here and buy a car. Okay, like I did. You will need to know this process. So I was his actor and we used my car. We actually went through the whole inspection process, which was quite lengthy. And I was really surprised at what you have to go through. And it really just baffles my imagination on how some of these cars that we see on the streets here ever got through this inspection process. Somebody paid somebody. That's all I can say. So as soon as when we're back here, uh, I'll show, I'll share the interview I had with Ace. We had a little uh, informal talk, okay? And we talked about a few things you might be interested in hearing, okay? See you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. Hey. Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. So, it's been a while since we sat down and talked. When the last time we talked, I don't even remember what we talked about, but we did it right here in this auditorium. We're here in Puerto Viejo, and we've been out doing a video today at the what do you call it? The, the transit agency? Transit, well, I was, tell me what you, it's Puerto Vial. Here it's called Puerto Vial, the one for Puerto Vial. Puerto Vial. So it's where you go to get your registration, to register your car, get it inspected, which is something I didn't know about. I didn't know we had to inspect our vehicles here <laughs> to get the matricula. Uh, it's quite the process. Yeah, it is quite the process. So we're gonna, just to remind everybody to, I'll put a link in the description to the video that you did today because the video about the matricula is not my video it's your video on your channel GM Ace the world famous GM Ace right there so and and I'm trust that you're going to do as usual a very thorough job in, of putting that video together and and getting the right information out there it's going to be a good education for everybody I'll do my best. And of course, you had a superstar working for you, you know, in the video. And we won't tell who that is. But anyway, I want to talk about some things, okay? I want to talk about, I'm, I touched on this on the last couple of my videos, and I know that people might be getting tired of talk, hearing about it, but I want to talk more about crime. I keep insisting, I'm telling people all the time, that I don't lose a wink of sleep here in Ecuador worrying about crime. And the reason why is because I'm not involved in drugs. I'm not involved in politics. I don't have anything to do with the cartel. I try to behave myself and not piss anybody off and <laughs> get a hit put out of myself. And realistically, I really have to be careful sometimes about what I say on my channel because it can trigger violence by the wrong people if, if we're not careful. It happens to people all around the world. But, you know, it seems like lately there's been a lot of crime. There's been a lot of shootings. There was a shooting in Mata three nights ago. Four people got killed. I don't know the details about it. Don't really even want to know. But I just know it was a street shooting and it had something to do with drugs. So, What's your thoughts on all this? Do we have anything to worry about? I tell people, come on down and, and pay attention to what you're doing and stay out of the bad areas. What do you think? I think uh, for the most part, I think this is going to be very similar to what I said uh, the last time. 
with a, with a few modifications in terms of maybe the intensity of how things have been going. But I think as long as you're not caught up in anything, you know, illegal, suspicious, something with these people who are committing these crimes, for the most part, you should be safe. Like, you're, I don't see someone who comes from another country wanting to go, for example, here in this city, we have uh, El Floron and San Pablo, which are the two zones that everyone knows stay away from those zones. I don't imagine someone coming from the States and purposely going to those zones because there's nothing there. Like, there's nothing there for, for someone who's like, who's just coming to visit, to travel, even to retire to. Like, you're not going to go live in those zones unless for some reason you like that kind of danger. But um, you would most likely look for a life on the beach, the countryside, in a city that, that's more suited, in a place in a city that's more suited for, for you. So I don't see those things happening. What I will say, and it'll be an, an added, I think, from what in comparison to the last time when we talked, is that there has been an increase in these petty crimes um, as well. Like, of course, the more severe ones are happening, but like, like I said, if you're not caught up in drugs, if you're not caught up in, in like asking for loans from loan sharks or who are related to cartel, like you shouldn't have to worry about that. But for normal people, and I tell you this because I've already seen it happen twice, um, not seen visually, but it's happened at where I work. Let me tell you that story. Um, at the academy where I work, uh, I work at an English institute here in Puerto Viejo as an English teacher. And in that institute, like, it's been around for like, let's see, since 2015, 2014, around there. And I started working there in 2016. During all those years, all those years, it's always been in the same place. And it has never gotten robbed. It's always been a safe place for the kids, for the teachers. In the zone that it's in, it's not a dangerous zone. Like, of course, if you go walk by there at night because it's close to the stadium and the street can be desolate, you can put yourself in danger because that's just the reality of walking out by yourself in an empty, large street. But for the most part, nothing has ever happened. And now, recently, we've had two instances, almost, ripped, almost like one after the other, because one was on Friday entering Saturday, and the other one was, I think, it, Monday entering Tuesday. And the academy got robbed. And for insignificant things, like one thing might not have been so insignificant. The pump, which they call La Bomba here, which is for the water, got robbed on Friday entering Saturday. And on Monday entering Tuesday, they robbed some cables, like some copper wire, some copper cables and stuff like that. Insignificant things, really, because like you, you, you would think like if someone's going in to rob, they might rob technology like a TV, a laptop or something that they can get access to. But the thing is, all that is inside. And the academy, whenever it's closed, it has these, um, they're called grates, the things that they put so that way no one can get through. And um, every place, and that's something you'll notice very frequently here in Ecuador, every place should have, no matter how safe you think it is, should have some kind of protection aside from an actual just door or window. This is just advice on my end from what I've seen and I've been able to appreciate from people who have their houses with these things. But as you can see, since they couldn't get access inside the academy, they stole some random cables and the pump that was more exposed. It's almost like they were doing it for the sport of it. <laughs> almost, almost. Just that. for the, the, so what about kidnappings and extortion? That seems to be on the rise, not necessarily here or in Monta, but I hear about it a lot in Whitetail. Is, is that something that North Americans need to be concerned about? Once again, it depends on where you're going, like where you're, you're you know, going around in, in, in your time here. If you go to those places, like I mentioned earlier, San Paolo, Floron, you're asking for it. I, asking I hate for to it. say it, but like you're asking for it because you have no business being there. People here don't go there because they know it's dangerous. If someone, a friend of theirs, because, you know, some people, innocent people live over there sometimes, like who, you know, Ecuadorians, like if you have a friend and they go with you, okay, different story. You're not bringing anything of value. You're just accompanying your friend. And since they're known in the area, it tends to be safe for them. But for anyone else, you shouldn't be there. Yeah. The kidnappings, I will say, I, I've heard a few things about that. And it's unfortunate because I remember what you talked about with um, the vehicle that got robbed. Mm. Uh, pretty much a whole kidnapping situation with robbery included. But recently, I, and it's something that happens, but like recently I've seen two cases of this where there have been kids 
who have been kidnapped. And I, I mainly see this. It's, it's a weird thing because I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. And I don't know what you would make of this situation. When you watch the news, they give you a lot of these spectacular, super terrible situations. A spectacle, pretty much. Like one of the things that are more exaggerated. And you think that's bad. But it's weird that they don't, they don't show these kidnappings because you would be really concerned. You want people to get the information quickly so that way maybe you can save the, the life of these kids. Because I've seen two instances at least where kids have been kidnapped and they just they don't come back. And when they're found, I mean, it's I, too I, late. yeah, sad to say it's not the ideal thing. But it's weird how they always show the, the robberies, the, the shootings, if it happens and you see it on the news. Mm -hmm. But you don't show these kidnappings. Which I'm not saying like, oh, hey, show this, like, oh, you know, for, for the entertainment of people. Show it so that way we can, we can like, get the word out. We can sure. help. Because sure. if you don't get the word out, how do you help? Yeah. I heard that the last bit of news I heard on that car was that they had to pay $4,500 to get the car back. Where were the cops? How come the cops weren't involved in this? I, how did this happen? <laughs> I really don't know because it's, you mentioned it, this happened with a car, but I remember years ago when I had my cell phone robbed, when I communicated with the, well not, what, I didn't communicate, my friend did that for me, we communicated with the thieves, they always ask for money, like they always ask you to pay them some X amount so that they can give you back the thing that you want. My concern in that is that you'd have to make contact with them and you know, they could rob you again, like who knows what could happen. Or so kill I, you. Or kill you. Like, I'd really rather avoid that. Mm -hmm. That's why, at that time, I didn't have money to pay for what the ransom that they were asking for a cell phone. And I also didn't want to risk it because I didn't think a phone was worth, you know, my possible life or even more of my belongings. Yeah. So, you know, the situation with the cops is, is super, super miss and sometimes hit. Yeah. Uh, it's more like if they know you, like I like to think that this is something that I've actually talked about with people who comment in our, in our description, the audience members who leave comments, where some people say that it's a good thing that there's this society where there's like, if you know someone, they'll help you out because it, it kind of incentivizes that, you know, get to know people, make friends. But at the same time, that means that if you don't know anyone, you're doomed. Like you're, you're, you're pretty much going to always run into all the problems and you're going to have to go through the whole legal process that takes forever. Um, and it's going to be super difficult for you to get anything done. And sometimes nothing even gets done. Mm -hmm. Like we go back to the situation with um, Vera de Ucrania, which it was a video I made at the beginning of this year where she got kidnapped with her friends inside a car and everything. And they were left in a ditch or something. And then they had to go out and like get help. They went to the police station. The police did nothing about it. They're just like, you know, that's normal. That, that has happened to people here before. So it's like, mm -hmm. but if it's normal, why aren't you doing something about it? Yeah. Uh, today, we, this is a little bit changed the subject, but kind of along the same lines. We were at this place where the, the transit center where we did the matricula. And I noticed the field full of motorcycles. And there must have been 2,000 motorcycles in that field. And they, a lot of them looked like they'd been there a really long time. So the lady inside the transit office said that most, these are all impounded, impounded by the police. And so, and I said, so impounded for what? And she said, it's like mostly traffic violations, you know, like not wearing helmets, carrying too many people on a bike, two up and on a bike, you know, because now they have the law that no, two guys can't ride on a motorcycle, yet we still see it all the time. But my question to you is that you're Ecuadorian and you know this culture far better than me. If all these bikes are getting impounded, isn't, aren't these people getting it? I mean, when you still see guys riding motorcycles down the road, carrying their helmet on their arm. They get looping their arm through their helmet and they got a baseball cap on and they're just tooling down the road. They're clearly breaking the law and their bikes are gonna get impounded for it, but why? Why are they still doing it? How do they get, do you drive a motorcycle? Explain to me, how does this happen? It's, it's, so, it's somewhat difficult to explain because everyone has, I think, a different mentality when it comes to that. I like to believe, and that's, that's where I kind of have this conflict because there are people who, they have their bikes impounded and you would think, well, 
you want your bike back and you don't want to do the same thing so you get your bike impounded again. But then there's the thing, how did they get it out? And once again, we go into this situation with connections. You know, you slip a bill to maybe yeah. not the person there because they could get in trouble, but to someone around, you know, you make the process. So it, it's, it's pretty much like that. And that's why people don't learn because there's this shortcut that is very, it's a lot easier to find, I feel, than in another place like the States where it's like you would have to like really cover it up. Yeah. But over here, you can, if you, if you have the right connections, you can it's find a, a way to like, you know. Like buying a driver's license. Yeah. I know people that buy driver's licenses here. You can't do that in the United States. Oh. I promise you, you can't do that. There might be some little whole dunk county somewhere, you know, in some state that maybe you could, but for the most part, no, they don't happen. So, well, so it's interesting. So the, 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 the bikes just keep piling up in the lot and some get recovered and then what about the ones that don't get recovered do they just recycle them or what do they do with them uh, eventually once the bike has been impounded for long for a long enough time i think it's like two maybe five years um around that time period they get auctioned because i remember a friend of mine once when i was when i was first looking to buy a bike he said why don't you wait for the auction to see if there's one that interests you and i was like i was surprised to hear that there was an auction for these mm -hmm. things but i wanted something new so i didn't yeah. go for that option but, I mean, if you're looking for a bargain, you know, <laughs> might be the way to do it. I mean, I know they do that in states. They people, they auction cars that have been impounded all the time. And people go and buy these cars at a real bargain. Uh, so, okay, so let me see here. What else can we talk about? Uh, of course, we just had our elections, so we have a new president now, no bullet, for 18 months. How do you feel about him? What's up with him? So far, I feel like... Well, I, I feel like the conversation is very split between obviously what it's always been split. Uh, people who don't believe in him and people who believe in a, a positive change for the future. The problem is that people are always, when there's a new election, a new person elected, and this can be in any, in any country, you always look at the negatives. Like you don't see that some of the things take time to change. You can't change a place that's been the same for 10 years, let's just say, in 18 months. Even my dad's talked about this before on live streams before, where a president, in order to first get established in office, needs like the first year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he's actually in office doing the things that he has to do. So Noboa now has a year and a half to prove himself. Which if we look yeah. at it in my dad's terms, that's not even, that's, he's not going to be able to do enough. anything. Yeah. But you know... I like him compared to the new president of Argentina. I mean, I don't even know the guy. I don't follow politics that well, but just from what I've seen on the news, this guy is making news worldwide, you know, uh, just because of his behavior and just his wackiness. You yeah, know? I've heard that he, like, dresses up in, like, some of his, uh, some of the campaigns that he does, yeah. that he was doing, like, as a superhero or something like that. Yeah. I yeah. really don't know because I haven't watched it. I just know that his proposal to change the the currency yeah. from from Argentina's Peso. currency to to the dollar. I mean, you look at Ecuador and it works. It's mm -hmm. it's not a terrible decision, but will it fix all the problems for Argentina? And then we have to look at a part that's probably not in any of our skill set. I'm not sure mm -hmm. about what is the direction of the dollar right now. Like, is the dollar holding up, or is something going to happen to the dollar mm -hmm. from here? to the next six months. Yeah, and Argentina is a much bigger country than Ecuador. I think there's as many people in Buenos Aires as there are in Ecuador as a whole. The dollar could be a completely different story for a country that size. So we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, one thing for sure, one, this guy, Malia, Milea, he is the very first libertarian to be elected to presidential office in history throughout the whole world, which is, I think is pretty interesting. But I wonder if that will have any impact on the politics in Ecuador. Hmm. I don't know if it'll have any impact because honestly, I'm not really too into the, pol into the political situation here. I, I understand it, it to a certain extent because I see what's happening, but I try not to get too into it because of what we talked about earlier, how getting too into these things, talking too much about them, things that don't aren't convenient for them, you know, can get you in trouble. 
Um, all I know is what I'm focusing more on is is the change of currency and how that's going to affect the way that we deal with that country. Because at least I think when you when you have a currency that's similar to your own, it's beneficial in the sense that you don't have to worry about conversions. But it's negative in the aspect for Ecuadorians who like to like take vacations. Let's just say, not a common thing, but um, who, who like to travel and go to just for example Argentina, like. You, you benefit from that, mm -hmm. at least as an Ecuadorian with the dollar going into Argentina with the Argentinian peso, yeah. like, it's a big benefit for Right you. now, it's real cheap for uh -huh. you, yeah. A friend of mine recently went and she was like, she had the most amazing time because they had, uh, they, ha they were coming with the dollar going to Argentina, which had uh, the peso, which is very devalued, so they had, with one dollar, like, they could do a lot more than with someone who had, like, one Argentinian peso. Yeah. Like so, over a thousand pesos now, it's a dollar. I think it's over a thousand pesos, yeah, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do have to keep cl a close eye on is what that's going to convert into once it becomes dollarized, mm -hmm. if it becomes dollarized. Because once it converts, then we have to see how that benefits the people there and how that affects the people wanting to go there. And also what effect it'll have on inflation. Mm -hmm. Because somebody's going to have to set that price and then everything has to go from there. I mean, it's like, I'm not an economist, I can't really talk an intelligent conversation about it, but the way I see it is, somebody's gonna have, he's gonna have, somebody's gonna have to place a value on the peso, the dollar for the peso, and, and then is inflation gonna continue to soar, or is it gonna stabilize and you know, settle down? That's what I wanna see, you know. I still have uh, dreams of going to Argentina for sometime you know just i'd like to at least go visit so so what else is going on in your world besides your mother's birthday today happy yes. birthday to her we happy want birthday to mom be sure and pass that along to her <laughs> for know? sure yeah getting documented here um other than that uh i would say in at least city wise I can't say that I've seen a lot of the changes that have been made because remember we also got mayors and everything now mm -hmm. and my concern was always what's going to happen after Casanova but at least I haven't seen that the city has declined. It's at least, mm -hmm. if it hasn't improved noticeably, it's at least maintained the, the quality that it's had before. Mm -hmm. Obviously we talk about things like crime because they're the things that stand out the most and we see that there's the, the rise in crime in some parts and some places like you can say you never see crime. I always say from my room, I don't see crime because I'm, I'm just chilling in my room. And as long as I don't like put myself in danger, like we're good. And as long as the security around my house is good, we're good. Yeah. But um, other than that, really, it's, it's hard to say that anything's really changed uh, around here. Uh, we were talking earlier also about the situation with the gun laws. Uh, they've, been, they've been enacted now, yeah. like it's, it's official, but. So now let's talk about that for a second because I asked you at lunch, that means now that if anybody here goes through the training, applies for the permit, I guess, is there a permit? Mm -hmm. That they can have a gun. They can buy a gun and legally carry it. Training, permit, I think a psychological test, yeah. and you know, being able to afford the gun. Mm -hmm. Once you have all the prerequisites, you can have anybody it. Anybody can have a gun. Mm -hmm. You That's gotta have all that. That's gonna open up a whole discussion on this channel, I guarantee you. But I mean, I, can I imagine. me personally, I'm a, I, I carried a gun back home for the last four years that I lived there, but uh, I was a concealed carry. I didn't brag about it, didn't show it, and most people didn't even know I had it on me. So, but you know, some people get carried away with that too. And that's, those are the ones you gotta worry about, you know, so. I kind yeah. of see this as two things over here. Like there's the possibility of the news uh, circulating a little bit bigger depending on these two things. One, where it's used correctly, like someone gets robbed and they take action against that person with a gun, and that's gonna be big news for people to uh, be motivated to, ha to, to carry. Mm -hmm. And the other end of the spectrum is where someone who is irresponsible with it, someone who somehow got the gun, I don't know, maybe they did a psychological test and they faked mm -hmm. it and got through with it, and they got their gun, and they misused it, and that's gonna, completely throw back the idea of having the gun. Mm -hmm. So I can see one of these two things happening and either pushing forward the idea that we need the guns or moving it back. Yeah. We have to see which happens first. 
Well, let's just wait and see what happens. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> I'm not going to rush out and buy one. I know that. Me neither. You know, it was hard enough getting my driver's license. You know. So, okay. Anything else you want to talk about? Nothing really. I don't think there's anything else that we can say. You got to be talking about your channel. How, how's your <laughs> channel doing? Uh, pretty good. I'd say uh, it declined a little bit after like the momentum from. I got this really big momentum from the the twenty. 22 tips video mm -hmm. and that was pushing me through the last I think three or four months and now it's kind of like died down a little bit I made an update to that video like not really an update I actually made a extra tips so like mm -hmm. adding on to those 22 there are 23 more tips and I think that video came out really good and really useful for people who are traveling over here even people who might just come to live mm -hmm. um, but like the momentum is kind of like you know it has its ups and downs. Uh, I really enjoy it when people like leave comments and you know talk. Even if they don't subscribe, it helps the channel out a lot. Sure. And in YouTube, that's a very important thing. And um, you know, I'm always trying to give the same quality information, trying to find things that maybe no one else is really talking about. But I feel like it's good for people to know. Yeah. Um, because sometimes people just don't know about these things, and I try to give that information. But yeah. It's how how well. many subscribers do you have now? Do you know? 4,700, wow, I think. Yeah, you're catching up. I'm waiting for the 5,000. Once I get 5,000, I cut my hair. So remember, if you want to see me with a haircut after like three years, like help me reach the 5,000 subscribers. And I'll pay for it, okay? Let's go. <laughs> we'll take you to my favorite shop in, in Monta and we'll cut it off. I Let's think you should it. get a burr. I think you should bu a buzz cut. <laughs> oh, I can never go <laughs> completely zero. Like I, I like to. I want to like. Someone told me to do like the Viking look, yeah. kind of like in the middle, like to have I'll the hair here that, yeah. and lower it over here. I won't let you do that. No, I <laughs> want to go back to what I had it before. Yeah, there you go. All right, good. Well, thank you so much. This has been a great day. We've had a good time today, and it's awful hot here. Oh, I can't God. imagine what the temperature is outside right now, but it feels like. Well, the humidity is pretty high, so it feels like it's brutally hot. But it's still, it's a beautiful city. I love this little city. You know, there's a lot to like about Porto Viejo. Yeah. I don't care what people in Monta say. This, this, people need to come here and see this place. At least you got parks here. <laughs> you know. Well, we're still waiting for the ones in Manta too, because I really want to go record over at the keep park waiting. in Manta. But <laughs> we'll just keep waiting. No, they're doing a lot of progress. They're. There's a lot going on on the beach. They're building a new park down there, the music venue. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be beautiful. So I hope so. And we I hope had a little setback this last year with the assassination oh, of our man. mayor. So God rest his soul. And, and you know, but the new mayor, the the, uh, the mayor that took over, is is going full charge ahead with continuing his legacy and and continuing his work. You know, so. Uh, We'll keep our heads up. We've got a lot of development going on in Monta right now. Lots of buildings being built, new apartments, condos, everything. So. Yeah, I've seen a few of those in uh, some pictures that were on the in the groups. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that we almost forgot to like mention was the whole situation with the rain and the yeah. power outages, yeah. which hopefully will be done by December because yeah. at least the way it looks like it's going, it has been improving like little by little. Yeah, like the yeah. first schedule no longer exists. Like before, it would be from like seven until like six and p.m. Now it's only, I think, from like 8 until 6 p.m., which yeah. is just an hour difference, but it's still yeah. better than nothing. Yeah. Uh, supposedly there was some rain over in Cuenca and like, you know, a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other things. So, you know. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we're losing our room. So let's get out here. Thanks so much, my brother. So It's always nice being here, brother. We will see you probably soon. <laughs> Definitely. You need to come to Monta. Let's do a live stream. Let's do it. All right. I'll go tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. That was a good interview.